Today I'm working with DxO Photo Lab 5. The title of this episode is Control Points and Control Lines, Understanding Mask Selectivity, Chroma and Luma Adjustments. I'm going to take a deep dive into this because I think there's a little bit of confusion sometimes when working with uh, Photo Lab 5. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, I want to take a look at control points and now the newly added control lines in PhotoLab 5. Now, I've done some videos in the past, but I wanted to really look at control points and control lines, let you know that you can use those together. But I really wanted to take a look at the chroma and luma adjustments under mask selectivity, because I think that can be a little bit confusing. And at the end of this video, I hope that everybody will understand how this stuff works a lot better. My general workflow for editing images is working with Lightroom. I do basic adjustments and then I go into Photoshop and do my more critical adjustments. And I use the TK8 panel to do all my local adjustments in Photoshop. However, from time to time, I like to work with other software just to mix things up a little bit. And I really enjoy uh, DxO Photo Lab 5. So I've been working with it a little more closely and trying to understand the uh, different tools in there, especially the control points and the control lines and how the new uh, mask selectivity adjustments work using Chroma and Luma. By the way, if you don't own any of DxO software, including the Nick Collection and uh, Film Pack 5, all their software is on sale right now, up to 30% off up till December 31st. I just want to let you know I am an affiliate with uh, DxO. If you click on my affiliate link, it'll take you to these sales. I make a small commission and this helps keep my YouTube channel going. And when you use my affiliate links, I appreciate that. So if you missed out on the Black Friday sale, you still have some time to save with DxO software. I haven't done much with this image. Uh, I have DxO smart lighting, uh, selective tone. I pulled back in the midtones a little bit, added a little bit of clear view, and as far as color is concerned, um, not much happening there. Just the uh, temperature and tint as shot. And I'm using Deep Prime as I always like to use in uh, PhotoLab 5. It's one of the best uh, noise reduction softwares up there with uh, Topaz Denoise AI. It's really great software. And uh, that's about it. And you can see the before and after. If I click the compare, here's the before and here's the after. But for a very few amount of adjustments, I get really great results. And that's one of the things I love about uh, PhotoLab 5. This smart lighting gives you a really nice starting point. Now let's move into the local adjustments. You're going to find the local adjustments right here. So click here. And then you'll notice right now I have this thing called a control point. Can you see it right there? If you right click, you'll get this interface that comes up here, your menu basically, and you'll find your control points here. These are the new control lines and you'll find your graduated filter here. And then you have a bunch of different kind of brushing tools like the auto mask brush and just the basic brush and eraser tools and so on and so forth. But this is the way you get your different type of local adjustments. We're going to start out with control points. So I have this control point. Now, believe it or not, the most important part of the control point is this part right here, which I'm indicating to you right now this little tiny circle. Now this tiny circle is the actual control point. Now, whenever you hover it over something, like say for instance, if I wanna lighten up this tree right here, it's an autumn scene. I want this tree to have a little more light and maybe some more saturation. I'm gonna to wanna to find a point that I want to select. Like for instance, right here. Now when I click on that, it's gonna pick that color and that luminosity value, okay? So this is the important part, and I think this is what's confusing. Whatever is behind that point right there, and you can see it's orange, the same color as the tree. It's dealing with the actual chroma value of that point and the luminosity value of that point. And then when you come up here in the menu, you want to come to this section right here. You see this icon? Go ahead and click it. Now that's your mask selectivity. That control point is tied to the chroma and the luma value of that control point. And then you have this opacity slider, which controls the amount of the adjustment. If you over adjusted, you could pull back in that adjustment. And this is the actual control point that you're working on. And then you have some other adjustments that deal with that control point as well. You can invert the control point. You can duplicate it, shut it on or off, 
delete it. Now notice they're not calling it a control point here. They're actually calling it a mask. So it's truly a mask. If you want to see what that mask looks like, all you need to do is come down here and click on show masks. And now you can see the masks. The light areas are getting very selected where the darker areas are being less selected. All right. So you can see I'm right on that tree. It's getting the most light. So it's the most selected. Now, you can adjust this area of influence. Watch, if I pull this in, less of that area will get selected. You see that? So very interesting, right? Now check this out. This is very important, this mask selectivity. If I take this chroma and drag it the whole way to the left, you'll notice the mask changes. And now I'll take the luma and take the whole way to the left. Now notice the mask. It's nothing more than a bright, area here in the center, a light area, which means all this area in here is being selected and it graduates off until it hits this line right here. Okay. So it graduates out from there. This is how the mask selectivity works. In other words, this point right here in the center, I'm dealing with the chroma value of that point and the luminosity value of that point. So in other words, if I take this luma value, now remember that's kind of a, kind of a midtone. If I drag this to the right, you'll see that mask tighten up. Can you see that? I'm actually getting closer and closer to that point, the luminance value of that point when I start to move this to the right. And you can see the mask getting very, very tight. And here is the chroma value of that mask. See how I can tighten it up? So basically what I'm trying to do here is adjust this mask selectivity to just adjust the area I want. Like I'm looking at this tree right here, right? So I want to get it adjusted as much as I want. Now you can see it's going out into these other trees. So maybe what I want to do at this point is pull in on this circle of influence and just really grab that tree right there. Okay. And then I could come here and adjust this luminosity value a little more if I want to and really tighten it up. Maybe, maybe like that. And I can work with the chroma a little more as well. So right there, I'm getting a pretty good selection right there. Then to make the adjustment, go ahead and shut your mask off by clicking that same button right there. And now we can see, here's our control point. And you can see all our adjustments here. Now, by the way, you'll notice I have all my adjustments up here at once. Now you notice these three circles. And if you hover over them, the first circle is dealing with light. The second one is dealing with color. And the last one is dealing with detail. If I only want to work with light, just click on the light group and the other groups go away. Then if you want to work on just color, just click on the color group. Or if you just want to work on detail, click on the detail group. If you're like me and you like to have all the adjustments up at once, just hold your command or control key down and click on the circles that are not highlighted in blue, and then you'll get them all up. Now, remember, if you want to see what you're affecting, just come down here to show mass and click that on. And you can see I'm just affecting that tree, the top of that tree right there. So let's shut my mass off. And now when I adjust, say, for instance, the highlights, I'll only adjust the highlights of that tree itself. Okay. And I may want to bring up the exposure a little bit on it. Not too much, but maybe like that. And maybe give it a little bit of, say, some saturation here. Okay, something like that. And now we can take a look here. See this eye right here? You can click this. Here's the before and here's the after. And you can see I'm just affecting that tree. Now here's something else that's a little confusing with Photo Lab 5 and control points. Once you've made a control point and you have these adjustments here, you can go ahead and add several other control points or as many as you want, I think. I don't know what the limit is, but you can keep adding control points with the same adjustments. And all you have to do is hover over another area that you want to adjust. Say I want to adjust this tree right here. Now that remember the center of that control point will be dealing with the luminance value and the chroma value of this point right here. So when I click here, you notice that tree starts to light up there, but you notice it's getting the same adjustments on it. Okay. It's tied in with this first control points adjustments, but now I can come and add it to different places. Like say, for instance, I can come over here and maybe add it right here and lighten up that tree. You see that? And then I could take these circles of influence and I can narrow them in if it's getting too much of an area. So I can just pull that in. And same with this one over here. I can pull this in a little bit and not affect as much of an area. But that's pretty cool. So you can keep adding control points. For instance, I can say, well, maybe up here I want to add another control point. 
it's just going to affect that area right there. And if I want to broaden it out, I can drag this out, see? And now it's going to affect more of these trees. But that's pretty interesting. And I think a lot of people don't realize you can do this, which is really nice. All with one set of adjustments here. Now, we can shut all those adjustments off here by clicking this eye. There's the before and there's the after. Now, we can look at those masks by clicking on show masks and you can see the masks I've created, right? So that's pretty interesting. So we can go ahead and just, especially in a fall scene like this, this is really cool because I may want to come here now and add a little bit of light and color to the, this area up here and maybe pull that circle of influence in just to grab these trees right up here. It's also important to add that all these control points are tied to this chroma and luma adjustment. So for instance, right now, if I take this chroma adjustment and drag it to the left, you can see the values changing everywhere, right? So I could come here and readjust things and tweak things up a little bit, and I can work with the luminance as well. Tighten up my just you know, tighten up my adjustments or broaden them out by moving them to the left, or tighten them up by moving them into the right somewhat, like that. And then we can take a look. Here's my overall before the the adjustments, and here's my after. So pretty cool stuff. So remember, all these control points are tied together with these adjustments as well as these mask selectivity adjustments. And every one of these control points are dealing with different amounts of luminosity and various amounts of saturation and different tints under each one of those control points. I'm trying to make sense of this for you. Now we have a new adjustment in PhotoLab 5 and if I right click, remember if you right click you're going to get a menu that comes up and we have this new thing called control line. I'm going to click control line here. Now, right now, here's my adjustment. If I add a control line, it's going to use these adjustments right here. And it's also going to use this chroma and luma mask selectivity value. Okay. So let me go ahead and draw a control line and I'll show you what I mean. See that little cross hatch there. I'm going to click right here. I'm going to adjust this grass with those same adjustments. And I'm just gonna pull this up. This is, all this area from this circle down is getting the full effect. And there's a graduation zone from here up to here. Now you can change that. And you see that little eyedropper tool. This is how you select, it's like a control point, only you're using this eyedropper tool for the control point. If I wanna lighten up the grass, like some of these mid-tone areas of the grass, I can just hover over this eyedropper tool and then drag it say like onto this grass right here, okay? And now when I click on show mask, check this out. See, it's affecting this area of the grass right here. The darker areas are not getting affected as much. Now remember, I can take this uh, adjustment here, like the chroma adjustment and keep dragging it more to the right. And you can see it gets more narrow, you see that? But it's affecting all these control points as well as the grass down here. So I'm adjusting the mass selectivity for this control line and also for these control points. Pretty interesting stuff, and I hope this makes sense to you. So I'm just affecting these light areas down here. Okay, now let's shut our mask off. And we can see, let's take a look at the overall before and after. Look at all the points and also the control line down here. Here's the before and here's the after. So we're doing that all with one set of adjustments I'm using control points and control lines. Pretty mind blowing, isn't it? Now, what if I wanted to make the shadow areas of this grass darker? I wouldn't be able to use the same adjustment, right? Because I'm lightening things with it. So here's what you need to do, very important. Come down here, see where it says new mask and you see this plus, give this a click. And now we have a new mask. And now I can right click and I can use a control point or a control line. I'm gonna use a control line again and I'm gonna make that similar control line. I'm just gonna click here and drag up. Okay, just, just like that, okay? And I can pull this up a little more if I want to and maybe bring this in just a little bit. To angle it, you need to be on this white circle and then you can angle it, okay? And now I'm gonna take this eyedropper tool and drag it into some of the shadow areas on the grass, like down in here, okay? So I wanna make the shadow areas darker. Now, we can look at the mask and see what it looks like if we click on Show Masks. 
And that's what it looks like. Now, remember, we have mass selectivity. Now, it defaults at 50, which is a pretty good starting point. Remember, if it's the whole way to the left, there's no mass selectivity. It's just affecting that whole area, and it graduates from here to here, right? But if I double-click Luma, it'll go back to 50. If I double-click Chroma, it goes back to 50. So now I could take the Luma and start to drag it to the right, and you see how it's targeting the darker areas better. So I'm going to tighten up the mask by moving this over like this. And I could try the chroma as well and see if I can tighten that up and see what I want. So you can adjust either one. And I think that's pretty good. It's darkening the areas I want. And now let's show, let's shut off show masks and let's make an adjustment. Let's take the exposure and start to pull it down. And see how I'm just affecting those dark areas like that. Pretty cool, right? And I may want to give it a little bit of clear view just to pop a little detail in some of those areas in there. Maybe something like that. And now let's take a look. Here is the before. Click right here. There's the before and there's the after. And it's just targeting the dark areas. Now I can also come up here and just click this eye as well. It's going to do the same thing. Whichever uh, layer is highlighted, that this uh, eye will affect it, okay? Now you can also double click these and give this a name like grass. Okay, so I highly recommend that you name your control points, and you may want to name this one, uh, say, trees and grass. Trees and grass. So not a bad idea to name those. That really helps. But then you can see your overall before and after by clicking this local adjustment here. Here's the overall before, and here's the after. Remember also you have this opacity adjustment. So whichever one of these layers are selected, for instance, if I select grass and I take this opacity adjustment, I can pull back the opacity adjustment on that grass. And now it's effectively not there, right? Now, when I take it to the right, I can adjust as much of that darkening of the shadow areas that I want. I'm gonna bring it the whole way up to the right. So remember that you have this opacity adjustment that is tied into each one of these layers. If you want to make more adjustments, all you need to do is come down here and click on new mask. Or if you want to work on that same uh, area like tree and grass, you can click on trees and grass and you can right click, get more control points, like click on control point and keep adding to it. Like I may want to lighten this tree up right here. And so I can do that if I want to, and I can narrow that adjustment in if I want to, and just get a little bit of that tree in. So you could go ahead and keep adding two adjustments, or if you want to add more adjustments, just come down here and click on New Mask. And now you can add more adjustments, and then just right-click, your menu comes up. And this time, let's say I want to add a graduated filter, so let's click on Graduated Filter. And I want to show you something about the graduated filter. It's a basic graduated filter, so you could just click and say, like, drag down, and say I want to darken the top of the image, and then I can just take the exposure and pull this down a little bit and just darken off the top of the image. But notice the mass selectivity is grayed out. It's just a basic graduated filter. If you need more control on a graduated filter, use the control line in its place, and then you'll have the mass selectivity. So you could substitute the control line if you want. Now let's say I don't want this adjustment right here in this tree. I can go back to the trees and grass and just make sure this is highlighted by clicking on it. And I can just uh, type my delete key and that adjustment goes away. And when you're all done with your local adjustments, just come down here to the lower right hand corner and click close and that'll close that interface. And now here we go. And then we can look at the overall before and after by coming up to compare and clicking, left clicking and holding down. There's our overall before and here's our after. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you understand control points, control lines, mask selectivity, chroma and luma adjustments in Photolab 5. It took me a while to wrap my head around all this stuff, but once I got to understand how it works, I thought it is pretty powerful, I have to say. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Gully. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing.